to our next to last Friday session for this semester. But before we get started, our last session, one week from today, that's going to be over in Council Party uh, room uh, 210, uh, will be by Melissa Jakovic in Open Learning, and she's going to uh, present an engaging session and discussion about successes, successes and challenges in teaching and learning that uh, you have had this semester, kind of reflecting on how things have, going, have gone for you uh, for the, the semester and this year. So <clears throat> that's uh, next week. Next thing I'll say is uh, that Jenny and I have, have tried various ways to get feedback about um, what you get out of these sessions and um, what you would like to see us uh, presented in the future for other sessions. And so instead of handing out pieces of paper that we ask you to fill in before you are in a rush to, to leave on a day, we're going to try a, 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 an email uh, format. So you're going to be receiving an email message from me this afternoon with a short survey attached. I just ask you to uh, comment on, on today's session. So you can expect that in your mailboxes. OK, so uh, today we have uh, Joanna and, and Mila. And, um, <clears throat> They are going to be talking to us about kind of uh, integrating biology and computing science, and I'll just mention that this hits uh, right on uh, one of the things that's mentioned in our institutional academic plan. Because one of the things we want to strive to do is to give students an opportunity to experience what goes on in other disciplines besides the main one that they are focusing on in their degrees. And we see a great example of that. So, Neil and Jimena, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, so first, uh, we'll have my introduction, and then we'll have Joanna, and then we'll have Matthew, and then we'll have Joanna talking for Cameron, who couldn't make it today. Okay. Uh, so the idea is that um, I want to make it interactive, so please feel free to interrupt, ask questions as we go. And I don't have too, too many slides, and I, I'll try not to get too technical, but we have a lot of people from biology. I will skip the computational part a little bit. So uh, first of all, um, there's introduction and then the part of Joanna and then we have some reflections by students. Uh, what is biomedical informatics? So the, the course that we'll be talking about is a special topics course and we call this introduction to biomedical informatics. So it has biology, it has medicine, it has informatics, informatics information and it gets into computing science. It has lots of data from my perspective, everything is, looks like data, biological, medical data. And what we are teaching our students in com computing science is the skills to understand the data and analyze the data. And understanding is a big part of this interdisciplinary nature of this course, because they have to have some understanding of biology or medicine, or this could be other field as well, because we have uh, chemistry and informatics and other fields. So that's very important. Uh, so biomedical informatics has genomics, it has medicine, it has informatics, it has bioinformatics, which is biology and informatics, and medical informatics, which is medicine, healthcare, and informatics. We talk about data. Now, when data has some additional meaning as it's being processed, for us it's information, and then we are getting into knowledge, which is very difficult to define, and I'm not going to do it today. <laughs> uh, so the course itself is a special topic, so we offer this from time to time, and the nature of the course varies from what is available or who is available to participate in the course. So we had Joanna um, doing the biology part and presenting her research, and students working with Joanna on her research. Uh, we had uh, Frank also participating in that course. Frank is here. And we had Catherine Pernitsky, and she was doing her master's as well. And, and she was participating in the course. So the idea is to take somebody who is doing currently research, because this is fourth year course level, so it's advanced level, and take computing science students who are interested. So mostly this is for better of computing science, but not only. Uh, we also had some students from biology interested in bioinformatics. And we also had two uh, students, they were taking this course with additional projects, 
to be credited for their Master of Science in Environmental Studies. So, so we have a mixture, but mostly in computing science students, and that's, that's what we try to do. Um, so what is the idea? We are storing, we are searching the data, we have all kinds of different data from the medical history through the genetic data. Uh, other part is to have huge databases, huge collections of data, such as a gen bank of genes, and we'll be getting there hands-on with Joanna's gene. And then uh, our idea is to search the data and look for patterns. So this is like a quick overview of what is the topic in general or possible topics. So this is not a fixed course. This has some topics from the list. Now we can also talk about telemedicine, uh, we can talk about um, uh, mobile health, mobile devices, and all kinds of the ways of collecting data. We are talking about models, and then we are talking about large bi uh, biobanks for collecting data on disorders and diseases. So spectrum of topics, we don't do this in every single offering. The idea is to pick up and connect this with what is going right now at TRU with specific people. So uh, we track the data, we can do some hypothesis, we can validate and do all kinds of other things. The medical informatics component of this course varies with who is available. We work with Les Matthews at Sleep Clinic and we work with Star Mahara or with nursing as well. So that depends what is out there. So this is a surprise sometimes as we plan the course. So what is informatics? It's not necessarily the same as computing science. <coughs> it depends who is talking. For me, it's the same. For example, uh, mostly computing, uh, computing science, and I use computing, not computer science on purpose. It's about the computational uh, perspective uh, and processing, the informatics, focuses on information, on data, meaning, and process. <coughs> so roughly speaking, it's very close. Um, and what is experiential learning? So we, we have the idea about the topics. We have an idea about the courses. Now we're getting into experiential learning. Um, I didn't put this in any specific order. I think the main part of experience is to have the actual hands-on. So jump into doing something, and Joanna will be talking far more about doing something, which is real, which is out there, and sometimes it's a crashing experience because we have some knowledge, the pre-knowledge, but sometimes as the students are trying things, they have to learn on the way. So it's not the idea of having <coughs> the pre-knowledge or given knowledge and then building on top, it's more of here are some tips and go and do it, and then you will get the feedback and we'll see what will happen. So uh, this gives also some practical skills which people have to go out and work. Those are students from fourth year. Soon they'll be working with different disciplines and applying their skills. They'll be talking with people from hospitals, uh, environmental, environmentalists, uh, chemistry, all kinds of different fields. So they have to learn how to learn. So we are not giving them a prepackaged set of skills, go out into the world and use the skills for the next 20 years. That will not happen. And we know that that doesn't happen with computers. In five years, things will be different. We want the students to be um, very active. We want them to have the intention to learn. So they have to pick up the topic. I will talk a little bit about the research projects we do. So they are forced to pick up a topic. If they don't have, I will give them a topic. But they have to work on that independently. So it's, it's something that is a very important part of this course. Uh, in terms of analysis, they have to reflect. They, have, they write a report. They go through the feedback. They talk with Joanna or somebody from the field. They talk with me. And they have this process of meeting people from different disciplines and talking in their different languages because it's very hard to communicate very often the communication between uh, IT, or computing science, and people from a different field. We have slightly different <laughs> languages. And then they have to conceptualize. They have to think in the abstract way and think how this skill or how what I've done may help or how this is related to other aspects. So practical examples we do. 
we have assignments and exercises based on real life things, the, the research. And then with the research projects in small groups, one student, two students, there's a formal proposal, presentation, and, and, and then project report. And out of those projects, we are gro growing into UREPs, into uh, larger projects or further studies into master degrees. So, so those are fantastic examples. So for example, and, and Joanna will, ex will give you more on that. I just want you to have the experience of jumping into something. So this is my in-class exercise for students. They have to take a gene. They are given the idea of the gene. They go to the gene. And then uh, they have to take the gene and uh, basically uh, process it using some biopro library, for example. Now, uh, what I'm expecting them to do is basically do the translation using different frames. So this is some technicalities. But they, they will be jumping into something, and then we'll be looking what they, what they got as the result. Uh, the other example is another task when we go and use, again, Joanna's aquaporin gene. We run the blast, and I think that um, uh, Matt will talk a little bit more about that. And we have some results, and the question is why we are getting those results. So for example, we have the rice as one of the examples. Uh, the similarity is not the highest, but it's there for, the, for that gene. So uh, Joanna will explain why, but uh, no, there is a reason why rice is coming there. Now, those are the examples of the projects that we had last time we're offering. So from obstructive sleep apnea patients and monitoring them, uh, electronic medical records, uh, viruses detection, uh, sleep deprivation, hi hypertension, uh, we had uh, security issues, nomadic computing is the mobile computing, by the way, uh, to cancer, uh, mobile system, autism. So those are the topics the students decided because they were interested in those topics. They wanted to learn more about autism and see how they can computerize the test for autism. Now, we pick up two projects. And one is the searching for primers. And by the way, I just, I just used the initials of the students because I didn't ask them if I can put the names up. <laughs> okay. So uh, searching for primers was uh, uh, by uh, Cameron uh, uh, Boyda. But he's not here. He was not available. But uh, I think that Joanna can talk about this. But we have uh, uh, Matthew here uh, to talk about the analysis of aquaporin and what he did in his project a little bit. And that's basically my part, and I will turn this to Joanna, and How she will explain, no. explain that, escape. Escape, right there. Yeah, escape there. I think it's escape. Yeah, but we have to okay, so close that. OK. Okay, so like Mila, she introduced you to uh, the topic, the, to the course, and I was the part of the course, and actually I was involved first time when I was taking this course, because I started to do my research uh, in Germany, and I needed the bioinformatics, a little bit bioinformatics to, and Mila was uh, starting this uh, course, so I was involved. I, I did what she asked, but also she asked me, Joanna, can you have some, uh, you know, like the lectures and uh, like to connect students with biology, okay? Because mostly in a class we have students from computing science, okay? So this is like, it was actually always this is challenge for me because, you know, like it's different uh, teaching the biology students, and right now I teach mostly second, third, or fourth year. So I had to, you know, like play and think, you know, like how to talk about the biology in order to give them the background. Because we are talking about in bioinformatics, we are talking about the uh, genes, which are really, you know, molecular genetics, and, you know, and computing, so totally different things. So what I, this is what, you know, like, oh, how does it work? 
no, it doesn't go here. So what you can see here, I just, it was what I wanted to do and I had to do from these big organisms like elephants, <laughs> for example, and the, uh, the m dwarf mistletoe. This is the plant which I work on. And Cynthia, she's my co-supervisor of my PhD. <laughs> so from here, how to get here? And you know, like the blast results, microarray analysis, structural interactions, and QRT PCR. And this is what students, you know, like who who work in bioinformatics, they will use because biologists they ask them to analyze data from the organism. So it was difficult, but you know, I did it. So generally, I had to go through the concepts of the DNA, RNA, proteins, genes, gene expression, human gen genome project. And this was more mostly uh, Mila did, algorithms, modeling in molecular biology. And then I was thinking it would be good if I talk about my research, because I had to start from A. It means I had this beautiful dwarf mistletoe, and from the dwarf mistletoe, from the plant, I had to go to the gene, to the ba basics. So this is what I wanted to show the students. And I started with the, when I had my lectures, generally I started with the introduction to biology. It means, again, beautiful elephant. I had to talk, you know, like about the all enzymatic reactions. Of course, I didn't talk about everything what was here. <laughs> <laughs> but I put the slide in order to scare students, you know, <laughs> what's happened in each cell, OK? And I was talking about the, a little bit about the microorganism. This is the electron microscope from our large intestine, different, you know, bacteria, about the DNA, RNA, about the proteins, and this is uh, my, not my, but the aquaporin. So also what I did, I, I wanted to get attention by like um, presenting some very interesting facts about the DNA, because this is like we are talking about the genes in bioinformatics mostly. So and also, I want to show these huge numbers. So it means like we have a lot of data. So the human body is, for example, human body is made of one trillion cells. In each cell, we have the DNA. And uh, each DNA, the length is 1.8 meters. So this kind of stuff. So when you think about this, you know, like, wow, you know, we must have a lot of DNA in our body. So also, the human genome is made up of 3 billion bases. It means in each cell, we have 3 billion bases. So a lot of information, big numbers, and we have to work with these numbers. For a person like me, you know, who just use the computer, it would be hard. So we need the help of people who know this all programs and like Mila, and they can process this data, OK? And I really like this one, the information in our uh, DNA. It would take a century to recite if we recite at one letter per second for 24 hours a day. You know, this is something, OK? So then, um, then also I mentioned about the, uh, that we have like from 20 to 25 thousand genes. I was talking about uh, genes in our body, how they look. I have to speed up a little bit. And also, in order to, it was to get the attention. Then I talk, I had some lectures about the real basic biology, I would say. It means I was talking about the cell types. Really, you know, like the background. Because many students in the computing science, they didn't have idea, you know, about this, you know, how does look, for example, the protein, what's the meiosis, mitosis, and about the DNA, RNA, mRNA, and the protein. So I was explaining this. I, I don't remember how many lectures I did have, but I, it was like, I think, more than two weeks, I think. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, like but still, lectures. this is, you know, this information, 
you can talk just about the genes one semester. So and uh, I had to be really, you know, like concise what I was saying. So also I, this is our, I was then, you know, like from this general stuff, again, I jumped into the DNA and what's happened, what we get from DNA, the information from DNA, we have the process of the transcription, translation, we get this mRNA and then we get the, we have the amino acids and then the information from DNA is translated to the order of the amino acids in the polypeptide chain and then we get the protein. So this is, you know, like many students were sitting and I remembered, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> but, but generally I think I, I got your attention. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> so then I was talking about these techniques which we use in the molecular genetics. Okay, many techniques. I'm not going right now to explain because we don't have time. They were the simple techniques. And also I was talking a little bit about the sequencing. Okay. And also about the microarray. And this is everything what I had to use in and do in my research. And right now I got some results with the microarray, but still I didn't analyze the old dots, but if we have this class next year, I can talk a little bit more about this stuff. So what's about my research? And what I did after this introduction, I brought some mistletoes. I, what else? I bo brought went my poster. Went to your lab, actually. Went and then the also students, they had a field trip to, to the lab and they could see this old techniques which we're using and also Cameron, he was in a lab, he was working on his, you know, because uh, his master's students and I co-supervise him. So the mistletoe, so I had this mistletoe here and I, I said, okay, from here to here, okay? How can we get there, okay? And this is where you, you, people from computing science, you know, you can analyze, you can help, you write the programs for this. So it, it was, you know, I think this is something which is very important because they could see a real person, me, okay, having this mistletoe plant and I was showing them result and explaining how did I get to this point. So this is like general, I also taught them general information about the Arcetobium americanum where we can find this arcetobium, which is the hemiparasite, and we can find in British Columbia. And also I was talking, explaining, because my research I did mostly in Germany, some stories which <laughs> happened over there, how I was taking uh, the mistletoe from <laughs> British Columbia, <laughs> and you know, like going to Germany through the borders, and also Cynthia sent some to me, and she labeled this Christmas ornaments. And we <laughs> got her. <laughs> and dwarf mistletoe is tiny like this. But also I had to work with the Arcetobium oxycedri, which is the, you can see in, uh, you can find in Europe, the Arcetobium americanum just in North America. But I told my uh, Ralph, my supervisor in Germany, if he is not nice to me, I, I will bring Arcetobium americanum, I will spread some seeds over there and they won't have the pines anymore, so. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, I did, I told him. So what was interesting in Arcetobium americanum, this is how the seed is dispersed. We have the mature fruit and this is how seed is dispersed, almost like a labor, you know, really a lot of water in a fruit at the end of the season and the seed is pushed through the, like many meters away and this is how adjacent pines are infected. So this is like the idea was how come we can get so much water at the end of the season in a fruit. So it was idea I think Cynthia's and yeah yeah so anyway we were thinking that aquaporins which help in transport the water they are involved in the uh, transport like more water, the genes are upregulated and we get mod more water uh, in the <laughs> fruit. So also we know that other proteins also it 
it means the other genes are involved are upregulated in order to uh, get the seed uh, dispersal. So then, like in details, I showed them. This is really nice, but this is like I think two or three years of work. Okay, extraction of the DNA, uh, actually RNA, in more details, mRNA, making cDNA. And before I was talking, I was explaining students what was the mRNA. We went through this all step. So they had idea, kind of, I would think, that, you know, what's the mRNA? How you make the cDNA? Cloning, transformation of bacteria. And then, okay, this part, this is mostly you use the computers. Okay, so I send the cDNA, the sample, to the uh, company. They sequence my uh, genes, my um, plasmids, and then they send the results. And I had to, uh, you know, it was just the order of the basis. This is what I got from the company when they sequenced. So this is how it came back. So. Then, you know, I said today or in two weeks with Mila, you will analyze my gene because I could put this gene, I did an additional study, functional study, and I checked that this gene is um, aquaporin. I took this gene, I put into the yeast, and they expressed this gene. It means more water was coming to the uh, plant. So I know that for sure this is aquaporin gene. So from here, here, so, okay, but what does it mean? It really doesn't mean, you know, like when you look at this, you have to analyze this data. You have to find the reading frame. You have to compare if really this is aquaporin with other aquaporins which exist, which are in gene bank. So you are using this, you know, like the different programs. You are using the BLAST to, to find, to if this is also aquaporin, similar to the aquaporin. Also, you use the programs in order to analyze if it will be the, because you will get from the order of the basis, you will get the protein. Okay, this is this protein, this is the structure, just the picture of the aquaporin. So, also computer will do it. Okay, so from here, many, many steps, in many steps also you use the computers. And the next step, it was the, and I have to go here. This is my poster, which I had during the conference. And so everywhere here, like I said, to get the structure, you had to use the computer. So you have to use the programs. So here, this is alignment after the uh, blast. So my gene was compared to many other plants, OK? And Mila, she mentioned the rice, but also there is really high similarity to um, fruit, uh, to the strawberry. And also uh, hu huge similarity to the vitis vinifera, it means the wine. So generally, first time when I look at the fruits of the mistletoe, I was thinking about grapes. So really, you know, like the uh, similar. So the next step, but you know, here you can see what I did, Reader Digest, you know, like information, what I did. Right now, we work with the expression of the genes, so it would be QRT-PCR. And here it comes the master student, because in order to run the QRT-PCR, this is the special technique to see if genes are expressed, um, you have to prepare the, you have to find some housekeeping genes which don't change the expression over the time. It's very hard for the plant like the Mistletoe, dwarf mistletoe. It's easy if you have the sequenced everything, but the dwarf mistletoe, so far people didn't work with the genetic part, it means with the sequencing. So really Mila, uh, not Mila, the <laughs> Cynthia and me, we work, you know, like doing this, this stuff, genetic stuff, sequencing, and like I said right now, 
I got results with the microarray where the all genes from the mistletoe were compared to the Arabidopsis thaliana, which has 25,000 genes. So we compare and we will have result something like, I have the result something like here. And I have to use some programs in order to analyze this you know, like the expression of the genes. So generally from this, you know, like I, students got interested in this because they saw the real thing. And what's happened, like we were talking that they went to the lab and they saw these tools which we use, okay? Also, like Mila mentioned, we had the projects for the, for the course. Some students did the uh, projects. And like Cameron, uh, this is the, like uh, we mentioned, master student, and he is working with this housekeeping genes to find these genes for the QRT-PCR. So he took bioinformatics and one of his project, projects, he was uh, finding using different programs to find the proper primers for the different housekeeping genes which we have in each cell and they don't change the expression. So generally this is, and also Matt, he, he was using my aquaporin gene and I don't remember exactly what, but you will talk about talk what you will do, what you did. So, and also Lee did yeah, something, yeah, they, yes. They did this mm -hmm. together. Yeah, so generally I think it was great, ex uh, great for me I could, you know, like bind together the biology with the informatics and I think students, they had fun. Yeah, and I always was bringing a lot of, you know, like the DNA or I, uh, many models, you know, so we had some exercises, so it was, I think, fun. So, I believe. So, let's so yeah, so we Thank you, and right now Matt maybe you know, he will reflect on the... We have the, the actual student. <laughs> yeah, actual student. <laughs> actual student. <laughs> yeah. Computing science. Oh, okay. Okay, so, hello. <coughs> Um, as as Joanna and Mila both mentioned, uh, I worked on Joanna's aquaporin gene uh, during the, the bioinformatics course. Uh, I guess it was it was bioinformatics when I was taking it, but uh, we did look at medical data as well. Um, so we what we actually did uh, it was not just me; it was uh, Lee Bergstrand and I. Um, Lee kind of handled the the biology portion. I'm more the computing science guy, but you know it was very interdisciplinary. Uh, he knows the computing science as well, and I know the, a little bit of the biology. Um, so we did a phylogenetic uh, tree analysis of Joanna's aquaporin gene, um, which was mostly, it, it wasn't something that we did to try and make a, a whole bunch of progress or to really figure out anything new per se. It was mostly just to kind of get used to the biological data, get used to some of the tools, um, just kind of see if we could see some of the information that Joanna had seen in her blast searches and that. Um, and it actually ended up working really well. Um, it, was, it was a great experience. and. Uh, we, we uh, used a couple of different tools. We built a couple of different uh, phylogenetic trees, um, which is basically uh, a way of taking a whole bunch of different organisms and just kind of lining them up and seeing if you can determine how they've changed over, uh, over time. So uh, the tree shows you where um, biological changes have occurred over history. So you can see where um, uh, previous organisms kind of split off in different places and, and kind of started growing their, their own uh, unique genes and, and things. And so you can really actually see in the trees that we ended up building uh, quite well, uh, like she was saying, that the grapes and the strawberries and a lot of other really juicy fruits, um, uh, lots of other plants. I can't remember any of the exact names of them because they're all really <laughs> complicated Latin names, but. Um, there were there was a lot of really really good um, really close matches in the tree uh, right around lots of lots of areas where there were very you know juicy juicy you know um, yeah you know just very very uh, liquid intense uh, plants 
um, not just fruits as, as well, you know, things that had uh, lots of um, water being built up in, in their leaves and things. So you could, you could really kind of see the same, the same thing you were seeing in the blast searches. Um, and the, the tree also showed us uh, some, some other kind of interesting things. Uh, I wish I had brought it with me to show because it would have been a lot easier to explain. But um, there, were, there were also some irregularities that we found that um, right at the end of the, the aquaporin gene, and I, I think I'm getting this right, right at the end of the aquaporin gene, there was a little bit of extra sequence that we actually couldn't find in most of any of the other, uh, the other matches in the tree. And uh, again, we're, you know, we're not experts, but we, we theorized that uh, this could be the, the little bit of extra that was making the aquaporin gene uh, you know, extra uh, efficient or that was, that was making it uh, just that much better at really pulling the water in to create that really nice kind of effect of shooting the, the seed out, which is quite effective, um, really. And, and I don't think I've seen it in many other plants. Mm -hmm. uh, I might be wrong about that, but it seems fairly, fairly unique to the, aqua or to the, um, the archaeothobium. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a really great experience and I've actually gone on to do several bioinformatics projects. Uh, I've done two directed studies actually, yeah, two directed studies this semester in bioinformatics. So we've taken, um, what have we done? We've taken uh, a whole bunch of, actually Lee, see and again, Lee, uh, this was with Lee, Lee and I, we, we kind of tackle the, the computing science, biology, kind of bioinformatics bridge together because he brings the biology background and I bring the computing science. But uh, yeah, we, we worked on uh, a couple of things this, this semester. We wrote a, a Python pipeline for working with bioinformatics data, uh, just a very general tool that you can use to convert between different general um, biological and bioinformatics formats. Um, we also did, uh, what was the other one? Um, he worked on the other one, actually, mostly, honestly. <laughs> but point is, we've, we've taken what we learned from the course, and we've taken not just what we've learned, but also the, the drive to really do something meaningful, not just to sit down and work on some toy problems and then you know, feel like we've done something. We've actually taken some real data that's out there, taken real tools, and gone and worked on things that you know, real researchers are working on, and potentially even found some data that could be helpful, we'd, we'd hope. And uh, it's a good feeling, and it's, it's really, it's totally different than just benign classwork. So I've, I've really enjoyed it personally. I, th I think I can speak for Lee as well. He's having a great time. So, yeah, uh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> oh. We have Fran here, so if we have a few moments and you want to comment, because you were teaching in the, uh, one of the offerings. Oh, the yes. Offering. If you just want to comment on what you've done, uh -huh. and how you feel about it. Um, I, I think I only took just the one, 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 one class yeah, and uh, was doing for that class. Just the, the, the background information like um, uh, Joanne had done, just um, telling the students what um, this, this gene sequence that you're getting, where is it coming from and how does it relate to what, how biological <coughs> organisms operate and evolve and how, I mean, we went through things like mutations and, and uh, the different types and how these can create uh, you know, can, can uh, create diversity that um, evolutional, you know, selection processes operate on. So to give them that context, rather than just having this binary or this uh, text file of data to let them understand how this relates to the real world. I think there was a project that was related to your research also, with birds, if you want to comment on that. Um, so well, we've had, um, uh, I'm not in, not in the context, or well, I think students were in that class and they they took a project in another class. Right. So we had well we had some for just in general computing science and I I, never sh I wasn't sure which classes they were in. We've had some students looking at uh, developing like a mobile app for um, you know I've done a lot of field work in biology and I you know my mm -hmm. bridge in taking uh, graduate studies is to say well how can we unite all the very manual field work that I've done and, and aspects of uh, ecological study and, you know, use computing tools to really make that efficient. So one of the things we looked at was uh, just even doing a simple, uh, like a tablet-based um, interface for collecting field data. So my study, I'm working with a group at uh, the University of Alberta, and they're putting up acoustic recorders for birds. And, you know, one of the tedious things that you have to do is, of course, you know, fill out forms where you put the recorder, what sort of habitat is there, and uh, 
any sort of other information when you deploy any type of equipment. And then, of course, that has to be digitized later. And there's, you know, I've certainly seen lots of errors or field sheets getting lost, all these sorts of things. So we worked with one group to say, well, how could you make a tablet interface that, you know, you could, while you're there, record this. And then, of course, the tablets have, you know, cameras in them, GPS is in them. They can record a lot of information that you don't have to copy out. And, you know, if you have self-service or anything like that, you know, you could have this data automatically being uploaded to your, you know, server back on your, at the university. So it goes into your database right away. There's no transcription lag or errors. Uh, we also had another group. We were doing a lot of bioacoustic recording work, and we had to look to ask them if, you know, how you could uh, make an application that would allow somebody to look at a sonogram and just simply annotate it for saying where, which parts of the recording and a, a, you know, a, a, a trained listener could say, okay, this is a certain type of bird or not. And then Matt has helped me with, with some data where we had uh, for a, a yellow rail study, again, from the University of Alberta, where they've done, they've tried to do some uh, on the ground quantification of the, the ecology where they're putting up the recorders. And one of the things they've done was to try to measure water depth, and that was done in this sort of cross pattern where you're simply just taking every 10 meters a, a depth measurement. And uh, so you end up with this cross pattern of depth measurements and well, how do you represent this in a computer in a meaningful way? Do you take the simple average is that um, that doesn't, uh, you know, that, that maybe oversimplifies it. And then the other thing is there's a spatial component. So Matt took that on and he said, you know, I said, well, can you figure out how to interpolate, you know, uh, a box of values? So he was using K nearest neighbor to do that, and he had to do some modification of of that to, to get some data. And you know, to me, that was a really neat, you know, part of my thesis is looking at um, imprecise ecological data. And so that was kind of a neat uh, thing to give somebody in computer science to say, okay, here's the big messy data we get in ecology where there's so, there's a lot of variation, uh, we're doing the best we can, you know, you, it would be great if you could do this wonderful survey, but you've got the helicopter bringing you in, you've got to rush and get these measurements as quickly as you can. There's, so there's all sorts of reasons why ecological data is messy. So giving it to that, somebody in computer science and saying, this is what real world messy data looks like, and, uh, you know, do something with it, help us out. So, <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to mention anything about the... We still have like yeah. five minutes for questions, so... Yeah, I don't know, do we wanna... I, I, could, I could talk all day about <laughs> all the different stuff I do, so... Yeah, so, so, so I, I think that, I, I mean, we'll stop here, and thank you very much for your attention, and please ask questions or comments, please. Uh, Matt, were these relationships with other juicy plants things that are not reco uh, reported in the literature before? Uh, I haven't done a strict l liter uh, literature search, but uh, I, I don't believe so. I don't believe it's, it's some of them might be, but I think largely, uh, like, like Joanna blasted uh, the alcoporin gene and, and found a lot of the similar things. So I think it was kind of uh, just another way of looking at the same information and getting, you know, um, a, better, a better feeling for the fact that that was the case, uh, more confidence, uh, you'd sure. say. Yeah, and it also, you know, the results, you know, like, it helped also me, <laughs> because, you know, they do the stuff and then, mm -hmm. you know, and this is cool, because from one side I am, I lecture, but also I am a student, you know, like, mm -hmm. in German, I am a student, you know, like, I'm putting this everything together and students helping me, and, you know, like, I help students, this is, this is great, I, really great experience. Mm -hmm. And having Cynthia as my co-supervisor. <laughs> 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 well, that's, yeah, what, we are that's <laughs> what impresses me most about this, is the collaboration yeah, on a whole host of levels, <laughs> interdisciplinary, um, different. Uh, and are you also the student who's working with the drone for? Yep. Yes, I met you at the <laughs> undergrad oh. conference. Yes. You're working with Lee on that as well? I, I actually had Three. That was the one I was working with Chris Foster on. Oh, I, had, okay. I was with Lee on the other two. To keep yeah. it all straight. <laughs> I, there's so many. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so going on. what? What? Uh, wonderful experiences. Oh, it's it's been uh, this semester has been amazing. It's been light speed. Hard yeah, to keep I up, bet. but it's it's been really awesome. So.
And it ha it's not over yet, actually. It's still going. We're actually, in a few hours, we're going to go <laughs> fly some drones. So it's, <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. I just want to find out what he was doing. <laughs> on, on this side of the street. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy it? I did, yeah. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say a lot of it is still over my head. I'm not even sure what blast is. <laughs> I can explain yeah. the details if you want. It's okay. A lot of the people that are using blast don't even know what blast is. So. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> So where is the sequencing done, and, and what's the cost of sequencing these days? Uh, because it, wa it was done in Germany, oh. the sequencing, and the cost of the, it's not very expensive, it's like four euros. Is that right? That's yeah. for the whole... Yeah, but it was the plasmids, you know, like, mm. the, you know, like for the whole, you know, like the plant, mm. actually with plants, it's, it's very difficult mm. to do sequencing. Mm -hmm. Because the plant is more complicated, more right, different right. types of the proteins, which are metabolic proteins. Especially. We, we never talked about the rice again. Yeah, we didn't. So what was but the you story? know, because also rice is over there. But uh, Mila, she asked me, and also when you blast, you get uh, alignment also with rice. But rice, this is the plant which grows on the and in China and also in Germany, they are doing a lot of study with aquaponics in rice also, because. Generally, you have aqua, uh, the rice in the water, growing in the water. So in the roots, oh, okay. you know, they have to they have. Well, that's to the connection this, with the water. From, yeah. Is it because it's so a water So the growing? up regulation, down regulation, mm -hmm. and what they are doing, they would like to have the rice, which can grow almost without the water, you know? So if the, so they play with this aqua points. This is what... Well, if you figure that out, it'll be a big hit in California. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of rice in California. Yeah. But the also water. right now we know that uh, many other genes are involved yeah, and doing, and I found another four, uh, four genes, which I didn't mention, but in the meantime, which are involved in, you know, like the reproduction, but doing the uh, microarray, like I said, the all genes in the mistletoe is compared to the expression of the genes in the Arabidopsis thaliana, which is the and we have over there 25,000 genes and we compare. So, uh, I should do a GoFundMe for get the sequence for the whole thing, right? It's not a bad idea. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. You should. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, but <laughs> having, having, you know, like, but having this microarray, you know, the next three months, I will also Yeah, you have so much out of that. So. Yeah, so on this one chip, you, you have, like, chip, you have, like, around, like, it would be 1,000 dots, uh, 1,000, 100,000 dots which you have to compare and computers, you know, like help you, how is the expression and so. And this is cool, this is very interesting. And you just got some great results, just yeah. recently. Like yeah, recently. yeah, so really mm -hmm. good results and great experience also in doing that. This is also like going to Germany, different country and doing the, you know, like the research and jumping to the <laughs> different, <laughs> you know, like walls and doing Funny things, you know, like, <laughs> like, because suddenly you are again student, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you plan for next year, Mila, for your course? Uh, we'll have to decide. Okay. We'll, we'll be planning for something interesting. We can use the microarray then. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah, advanced, yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 And and Matt will be working this summer with me. On yeah. Mm -hmm. Three, at least three research projects, yeah. yes, all summer. So, so maybe I also we can yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something. Yeah. 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 So yeah. why don't you try to keep Matt busy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> He's not because enough because you know, like yeah. seeing drones, I don't know if you <laughs> yeah. like to stay so in a building anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta make it work together, right? Mistletoe, right? Looking at them on the trees. Yes, yeah. Yeah, multi spectra camera, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All kinds of, of applications there. Yeah. I, I think the point of this is that we don't want to like fix this course on one specific mm -hmm, topic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if students are willing to talk about autism and they, they want to talk about hypertension, we'll take some That's of it from nursing or less. And we'll have that, mm -hmm. and and this is like pre-decided before the course, and, and at, at at the front also we, we navigate through the course and see what is the interest. Mm -hmm.
So, uh, so I think this is a course that opens the doors. It doesn't mm -hmm. really yes. the, this is intro to intro, I will say, to bioinformatics and bi yeah. medical mm -hmm. informatics. It's not a course that covers those topics. But if we have few students picking up the interest, I'm very happy out of the 30 mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. that usually take the course. That's yeah. that's mm -hmm. that's sufficient, and some students may may get interested later on in their lives because I I have some students that I'm in contact and they're working in the hospital and they do statistical analysis of data and so on. So it just it just grows on them slowly, mm -hmm. and some I know, but we'll see what will happen <laughs> <Yeah>. to you. <laughs> and bioinformatics, we'll this is a big field, yeah. you know, like because I think like person like me working in biology, you know, like. You, you use the program, but you know, like to really understand the programs, I think you don't have time to do it. Exactly, yeah. Because you are working, you are focusing on the other side, unless you would like to switch, like being the bioinformatician, you know, like, so, yeah. Well, that's what he is doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Doing, think, yeah. Do yeah, he's I trying think. to juggle he's both. He's doing yeah. biology and computing science. Yeah, but so. I think in future he will be focused more with the, you know, like this, you know, like, different programs in really in biocomputing, you know, like to analyze the, yeah. And then there's the writing of the programs. Yeah. Sort of the next, coming up with a way to make those things work. Just yeah. Insane. Excellent. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. It was great. Yeah. Yeah.